All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined from Cleveland, Ohio by Frank Favaro. How are you doing, Frank? Good, John. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and Frank is the founder and president of Serve Center Coaching in Cleveland, Ohio, the leading CX coach certified by the renowned the Julius Group, with a successful tenure as one of MSCA's top account executives, Frank doubled the national average for net margin, which is excellent, focusing on authentic relationships and superior customer service, recognized as Coach of the Year in 2022, and the host of the People Business Podcast. And what we're going to talk about today is maximizing profitability through superior customer experience. So, um, you know, Frank, uh, in a lot of businesses, especially ones in the SaaS area and all of that, you know, profitability is something that, uh, you know, many of them are yet to understand how to get there. Um, but for people running proper businesses <laughs> who know that you have to, that you have to uh, turn a profit in order to generate, in order to sustain the business. And in fact, profit is the reflection that you have a business that is efficient, has something that people need and they see value in paying for it and you can produce it or deliver it efficiently. So, um, you know, Frank, why is, it, why is it that profitability is still something that a lot of businesses really, really struggle with? You know, profitability, I, I think, is something that a lot of people struggle with uh, just for the fact that they don't truly understand their their value uh, or what their product or service brings to the marketplace. And if you can't differentiate, uh, you know, with what you do, um, you know, outside of price, then it's going to be really hard to maximize profitability. So, you know, what we really look at is, OK, so. There's three ways you could truly differentiate in the marketplace today. Number one, you could be the low price provider, right? Mm -hmm. um, and there's a market for that. Sure. But that's really not, you know, if you're trying to improve profit profitability, you're not going to do that. You can't just continue to, you know, win that race to the bottom, so to speak. Uh, the second is innovation, right? So you could come up with something extremely innovative. Um, but six months later, the way, you know, companies are able to copy innovation today so, you know your advantage doesn't last as long as it used to and that third piece uh that, where you can really differentiate with, with your people is that customer experience mm -hmm. and i believe that a great customer experience really creates a, a unique selling advantage in the marketplace today because mm -hmm. a lot of companies look at it as hey, this is so basic this couldn't be the answer mm -hmm. could it yeah. and as a result of that they, they neglect it so that's my in input on that. Yeah, and and just um, talking about customer experience uh, itself, uh, I, I think part of the reason why a lot of people don't understand it is that they don't realize is that it's a continuum, right? It starts the first time they interact with your brand and every other time. And therefore, if you're not delivering the same experience at every point in the journey, we as humans tend to default to the you know the worst experience we have or this a bad experience regardless of whether all the other ones have been positive so i think um so talk a little bit about the ho holistic customer experience yeah I, I think you hit it on the head i mean there is an an interaction at every touch point uh through, through the customer's cycle uh you know from from the first moment they interact with a brand and that could be you know, online that could be, you know, face to face, that could be through a phone call, uh, that could be, you know, you know, however that is, right? There's always, and there's an impression being made every time a client is interacting. And, you know, every single time uh, you're either hurting your brand or, or you're helping your brand uh, each touch point, each time there's an interaction. And we start, and I call this like the, the bank of trust, where we start to, earn more trust the more times that we provide consistent great experiences um you know zaltman gerald zaltman harvard uh he wrote a book um on the entire you know subconscious of clients today and it shows us that 96 percent of buying decisions are subconscious you mm. know because human beings are emotional and human beings react to how they feel in, in those moments so if you're not 
really focusing in on how you make your customers feel at each touch point, face to face, ear to ear and click to click, then you're missing the boat in the marketplace today. Yeah, and I, and I like what you just said there about you know how how you make them how you make them feel and because uh, I always tell this story, uh, uh, Frank, that I took over a company some years back. It was uh, we spin selling. It was the global sales consulting company, Hathaway. Mm -hmm. And my first thing I did was I went around to cut the biggest customers to sort of you know meet and greet. And they all told me the same thing: loved loved the product, loved when we did implementations, all of that hated doing business with us, found it's really hard to do business with, but they, and, and I was like, what? So I had to go back and realize that the organization had never had organized everything for its own convenience, not for the mm. convenience of the customer. It's a great point. You were seeing the business through your lens only and not yeah. their, you know, how is their perception, right? And mm -hmm. That's I think that's where really the the bulk of companies are missing the boat is they're not putting themselves in the shoes uh, of the customer. I mean, my wife just yesterday is going through this experience with CVS Pharmacy and she puts in an order for our, our children and for a prescription that my son has to take for six weeks. Mm -hmm. Six weeks is a pretty long prescription, sure. but it's, it's a fungal thing and not going to get into the details, mm -hmm. but He's four weeks in, he's out of it. He needs more of it. She goes five days in advance to order more. They tell her, they promise her it's going to be in and we'll notify you via text message, right? Uh, here we are. It's nine o'clock at night. She still hasn't been notified via text message. She calls and the lady who took the call just was so taken back and so rude. And just, she's she, she, like, this isn't my fault. This isn't my problem. Mm -hmm. And never once thinking about how it would be if she was in my wife's situation, yeah. right? Never once putting herself in her shoes. Her tone starts to elevate. Next thing you know, my wife's tone escalates. And next thing you know, we have you know, a customer that is so irate and so frustrated. And all the employee can think about is, is her, herself. Yeah. And I never know. putting herself in the shoes of my wife. So I think that's very common. Uh, yeah, because companies today really don't train that they don't understand that, you know, that's how you lose customers. Oh, uh, absolutely. You lo lose them in a lose them in a heartbeat. Um, one of the things that uh, we, when we were setting up for a pipeline or where we set up our, our customer support and customer service under uh, Liz, who who's based out of the UK, we we took a different approach. Number one, we wanted to have humans for people, but also we wanted to get away from this idea of customer service is there or customer support, your job is to close the ticket, right? Just fix it, move on. We actually decided, no, we're going to take this as an opportunity. When you put in a ticket, we're like, fantastic. Now I get to talk to you. I get to help you. I get to maybe advise you and, and maybe suggest other things to do. So it can be it can be an enriching experience, not just closing a ticket. And I think it starts with, the philo with philosophically, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and that's, you know, Changing the way you you look at that that process and closing that ticket gives you an, a true opportunity to under, understand your customer better, yeah. uh, to really understand like you know what we could have done potentially better to make it better and learn from that. Like mm -hmm. a lot of times, you know, companies I work with, it's like they don't want to hear customers' problems. They don't want to hear about the, when the, when they're not doing well. And I, I look at those as the biggest learning opportunities and. and, and even taking it a step further, it's an opportunity to make things right uh, mm -hmm. and earn that that trust. Because look, when business is easy and it's going well and it's seamless it, and there's no adversity, um, you don't really understand who a company is or who a person is. Mm -hmm. uh, you need that adversity. You need to have some some turbulence in the business to really understand. Are they going to deliver for me when there's problems? Because mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day, that's what every customer really wants. Can you provide me the peace of mind to where you are going to deliver and I could feel comfortable knowing that you've got my back? Yeah. And the worst thing is, I, I was so frank, the worst thing is that is when you have a really positive experience, maybe during the sales process, right? You know, you grew up work with a great sales person or team and the company, different people come in, you feel like, yes, these are the people I trust. These, these are fantastic. And then you, you know, you put pen to paper or electronically sign the contract and then you're handed off over to implementation. And suddenly 
you know, these these people who were all over you have disappeared and now you're feeling a little vulnerable. And I think that's the thing that people miss is that I may be purchasing on behalf of my company, but I'm personally invested in this too. It can be career enhancing. It can be career limiting. Therefore, to leave me feeling a little vulnerable and on my own is not a good start to the relationship. Scary. And, you know, we call that employee roulette. So the person that gets you there and takes you to that, to the place that gets you to make a buying decision and you feel comfortable with that person. And the next thing you know, you're handed off. And then that next experience is not the same, you know, um, so, and that's that's another you know that's a that's a huge gap uh, in the in the touch points. So you know the top companies in the world, what they focus on is creating that same experience, regardless of which employee you get. Mm -hmm. So and that takes that takes training, that takes education, that takes continuous improvement, and investing the time to get uh, everyone to, on that level. Right. And and what you um, outlined earlier with your CVS example is just such a really it's a really good one because that whole experience could have been different from the start had that uh, person when they answered the phone and your wife said it had just said oh I'm I'm really sorry you're having this issue let me let me look into this right even though simple something as simple as that starts it off on the right footing and it also remember how how we react I mean that person on the phone with your wife was no knew that they were getting angry knew because physiologically things are happening but instead of taking a step back they just escalated that's exactly what they did and and you and you hit it right on the head like if she would have taken a step back and had a little bit of empathy and said i apologize if i was in your shoes i would feel the exact same way instead she never apologized <laughs> yeah. right not once and again, we go back to you know ninety six percent of buying decisions. Continue to buying from continue buying from a company. Go back to how we make people feel, the subconscious, the emotion. You know, my wife told me after the fact she'll never do business with CVS again. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. Yeah, no, no, hundred percent. And and like and as you said as well, I mean, these are these are not just opportunities uh, for to fix something. These are opportunities to add value. These are opportunities to build relationship. And I think part of the problem is a lot of companies built this whole, these models to be as hands off as possible to make sure, you know, you're kept at bay. And I just don't think that aligns with what people really want when, when, when there's, when, when there's an issue or, or anything like that, they want to be able to communicate with the company, right? They want to know that there's people at the end of the day, people there that care. Absolutely. I mean, because if we could just, do business online 100 percent of the time yeah. like you know we wouldn't need you know everybody could just put their price up on the website and here you go right this is, mm -hmm. this is it and it's just an a la carte and yeah. i get what i want and but no like you know there's there's problems in business and, and it still takes people to solve problems and, and to build that that ongoing trust and you know without that um we we're serial switchers. Like, you yeah. know, we're, we jump from brand to brand to brand. And I think a lot of companies think like, oh, there's no such thing as loyalty today. Well, uh, I disagree. I think there is loyalty today, but you have to earn it. Yeah. And I, and I think that's the that's the excellent point there is what you just made is you have to earn it. It's just not given because as you mentioned earlier. I mean, to be perfectly honest, most products and services today are pretty commoditized and and commoditized certainly in the perception of the consumer. Right. Absolutely. Uh, and therefore, as you said, your opportunity to differentiate is often in the experience, in the people and how you interact with 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 people. So to your point is, if that's not a deliberate strategy on your part, then you're missing out on the opportunity to differentiate yourself. Otherwise, you're going to be in that low price, you know, that what do we always call that race to the bottom uh, on your pricing, uh, which is, you know, and obviously you're going to need a serious volume business in order to make that work. But yeah, but a lot of them just miss that opportunity that that's where the value, that's where you can differentiate. Well, you, you take the, uh, I always like to to look at Ritz Carlton, for example. Mm -hmm. They're a hotel chain, right? You you have one in San Diego. Mm -hmm. uh, we have one in Cleveland. Uh, if I go online, the Ritz Carlton in Cleveland will, will run anywhere from, you know, uh, eight ninety five to twelve hundred, depending on the day and what's going on in the town. You know, in, in the same 
town, you know, the, the next hotel down is about $600 less mm -hmm. per night, right? And when you look at their online reviews, it's only about half a point that really separates them. But look at the difference in what they're charging, you know, for what they get. And, mm -hmm. you know, the thing about the Ritz Carlton, it's just their, it's their attention to detail. It's, it's the relationship that they try to connect with. It's the additional assistance, you know, yeah. and everybody could do that. Like everybody could copy that model of like, we want to be the Ritz Carlton of what we do. All it takes is just investing the time, the mm -hmm. energy. And you want to talk about maximizing profit. I mean, yeah, I think that's a perfect example. So, yeah. you know, it, it just, but again, <laughs> You know, I this uh, two weeks ago, I, I was at a conference. I, I spoke at a conference and I spent two nights at the Ritz Carlton and I spent two nights at the JW Marriott that was attached to the same conference center just to experience both both hotels It just to experience the difference between both hotels. And it was night and day difference. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's it's just interesting how, you know, we know what to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Most people know what to do. That's that's the funny part. Now they know what to do, and uh, have you know have been fortunate to have stayed in many Ritzes. We do a lot of our events in, in Ritzes as well across the country. The thing about the Ritz, one of the simplest things about the Ritz, and which which every hotel could do, is that uh, if you if you're walking down the corridor, right, and there's somebody who's you know maybe cleaning rooms or something, if you ask them a question, they will take initiative they will take responsibility for that and they will find you or they'll get you to the right person or whatever try that in most other hotels where they will just go i don't know and leave you and that's the difference they use every up they they train their people to use every interaction to be customer service every time and it's their credo uh mm -hmm. and one of their credos their their pillars is uh never point always show yeah and that's you just hit it i mean that's the example they you know, most times, like, and the first time I ever stayed at a Ritz, I tested them. I wanted to see what they would do. And to your point, I was on the 13th floor and I walked out of my room and I asked housekeeping, hey, I have a conference in the morning. How do I get to, uh, you know, the, the conference center, uh, whatever it was I needed to be at the next morning? I just expect her to tell me, get on the elevator, go all yeah. the way down, past the restaurant in the cafe, and then you'll find, you'll see it. No. She actually took the time, John, to get me on the hotel, took me all the way down there and showed me exactly where it was. Mm -hmm. Who does that? Yeah, no. And and in those, in those, so she delayed cleaning the room for five minutes, but the five minutes spent bringing you there is a memorable five minutes. It'll have you coming back as a customer. And here I am talking about it on, on your podcast. Right? Exactly. <laughs> and and yeah, and the last thing I just want to ask you about is, is that whole point about, yeah, it's great to have, it, it's great to get to satisfied customers, but to turn them into loyal supporters, fans, people who refer you, that takes a, another level, I think, again. It does. And, but inherently human beings, there's one thing that, from the beginning of time to today that we still are after and it's it's increase it, it's it's things that improve our lives mm -hmm. uh we want and if we can connect with a product or service and then the and it helps their lives and then the people also are on the same level yeah. then that's how you earn loyalty it's getting your people your product your service all together on the same page with one mission and that's to provide increase of life to other people yeah and and to do it and to do that with uh enthusiasm and uh, an upbeat and just you know positivity because i think that's the other thing too we want we we feel good about these products we also want to feel good about the people we just want to have a good feeling as you said even if it's a simple even if it's a simple tool we're using we still want to have that good feeling and good and that we have allied ourselves with a good brand absolutely and you know, the most basic things uh, of, you know, whether, you know, it re really doesn't matter, but like ease of doing business, consistency, right? Um, when we think about uh, companies today, time is, is so valuable. I think timers are, you know, money, we used to value money more than time, but I think today, you know, post pandemic, we value time. So companies that can 
save us time, right? Companies that can do it in a way with, with genuine hospitality and do it in a way that make us feel good. You know, we love that. And, mm-hmm. and yeah, when we find it, we are loyal. And, and the beautiful thing about that is, is we become ambassadors then to those brands and we start sharing it and telling everybody else about it. And then when you get your customers becoming your best salespeople, well, that can be a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. And and as you said, I mean, none of this is rocket science. It just takes, it just takes being, you know, commitment and being intentional and sort of saying, yeah, we're going to, we're going to do this. And I just advise everybody, every time you have a terrible experience with a brand or an organ, a company or whatever, is ask yourself, what would that experience be like with my company? And if you sort of go, ooh, could actually be quite similar, then you know, there's a good piece of information for you. Well, listen, uh, thanks again, Frank. All of Frank's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Absolutely. Yeah. So I help companies maximize profitability and really see those blind spots that we've been talking about today um, and utilize that, that information to see how can we improve morale of our employees? How can we get people on the same page working in harmony? How can we reduce turnover? And then as a result of that, once we do that internally, then we take it to the external customer and we start to really make our customers more loyal. So it starts with employees. It starts loyalty there. And then once we earn that, then we go out and we earn it for our customers. And that's what we do. We consult with companies and we help them do that every day. Fantastic. Well, listen, thanks again, Frank. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again very soon. (laughs) 